Prime Minister Morrison's sentiments expressed to the Pacific Islands nations was not unlike those of a violent husband to an abused family. I only hit you because I love you. This week I learned a little bit more about two things that I knew little about. Firstly, I learned a little more about the island of Tuvalu. And I also learned about the possibility of the approval of a coal mine in the Hunter Valley the size of the island of Tuvalu. The reason I learned a little more about both of these subjects was the Pacific Island Forum. Our Prime Minister was a lone voice among Pacific Island states in Tuvalu on Thursday, arguing Australia had done more than its share on climate change. Australia, our nation, also succeeded in its push to not have the term climate change crisis in the communique. On Wednesday, he said that he was ready to have the tough conversations with his Pacific family, while noting Australia's significant support to the region. Prime Minister Morrison's sentiments expressed to the Pacific Islands nations was not unlike those of a violent husband to an abused family. I only hit you because I love you. The Deputy Prime Minister commented, I also get a little annoyed when we have people in those sorts of countries pointing the finger at Australia and say we should be shutting down our resources sector so that, you know, they can all survive. He went on to say, they'll continue to survive because many of their workers come here to pick fruit, pick our fruit, grown with hard Australian enterprise and endeavour. Well may we say, blessed be the fruit pickers. Jesus said to the crowds, when you see a cloud rising in the west, you immediately say it is going to rain and so it happens. And when you see the south wind blowing, you say there will be scorching heat and so it happens. You hypocrites, he says. You know how to interpret the appearance of earth and sky, but you do not know how to interpret the present time. This idea that change takes place at the intersection between place and time is a big deal in the history of philosophy. For example, when Immanuel Kant writes his second analogy in the Critique of Pure Reason, he distinguishes between the two types of observation. When examining a house, he suggests, one makes numerous observations of the parts. Uh, we observe the roof, the guttering, the, the bricks, the windows, the doors, and we do that in a random order. But when examining a moving ship, the order of what one sees is in time as well as space. First we observe the distant view, then a little closer and then a little closer still. And the alterations in the observations, in the, in the appearances that we connect with, are in Kant's language, synthetic faculty of imagination. Uh, the way we observe things in, in the changing space and time enable us to predict what might come next. Now, all of that is to say that the whole activity of seeing and perceiving patterns, seeing and knowing where and what one sees is going, is a pivotal human capacity, both in the history of philosophy, but also for Jesus in Luke's Gospel. This pattern of perceiving seeing and perceiving is indicative of how we come to know something. Hypocrisy is then relying on the empirical evidence that we, that we see, but only in, in some respects. Relying on the evidence we see perhaps in weather patterns, but being blind to them in other aspects. So we could paraphrase today's gospel by saying, when you see the ice melting in the Arctic, you say immediately, the seas are going to rise. And so it happens. 
And when you see the open ocean temperatures rising, you say there'll be more violent storms and so it happens. You hypocrites. You know how to interpret the appearance of earth and sky, but why do you not know how to interpret the present time? You'll note that in this particular case, Jesus is talking to the crowds. He's all very keen to call the, the leaders hypocrites. But in this particular case, he is talking to the crowds and therefore he is talking to us. The accusation of hypocrisy is laid upon us. It is ultimately we who see the evidence of global heating right before us. And it is we who continue to vote for policies that create the illusion of economic stability while at the same time condemning our descendants to extinction. Jesus said, Do you think that I have come to bring peace to the earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. Dr King wrote in his letter from Birmingham Jail, highly critical of what he called the white moderates, who, in his words, are more devoted to order than to justice, who prefer a negative peace, which is the absence of tension, to a positive peace, which is the presence of justice. Dr King is recognising the truth that Jesus is expressing in this text. For a just peace to prevail, there will be conflict. Because a just peace requires that the interests of the poor are given equality with those of the rich. That the needs of the marginalised are recognised alongside those who dwell at the centre of power. That the voices of the powerless are heard in harmony with those of the powerful. And that the lives of the yet unborn are given equal dignity and value to those who now enjoy the abundance of creation. Therefore, if we truly desire the coming of the kingdom, we must be able to bear the discomfort of inconvenient truths, the distress of just conflict and the tensions of positive peace. Because it is then and only then that we will be able to stand against the charge of hypocrisy.